No single person on this earth has the same purpose as you do. Mm. Once you recognize this, that is what brings life. Because you realize I am the only person on this earth that can do what God has purposed me to do. Mm. Yes, there are many preachers. I am here mm. teaching. There are many teachers, but not anyone can teach like I do. Man. Not anyone can teach like someone else who is called to teach. Each teacher has their unique identity in the gifting of teaching. Mm. Whether you're a nurse, whether you're a doctor, whether you're a lawyer, whether you, 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 whatever you do, no one does the thing the way you are called and purposed to do. And so it is customized. When you understand this, you will recognize that I'm important to God. I am important to God. If I'm the only one who's able to do this and this world and the, 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 the nature or the make cup of this world will not move forward unless I step out and do what I'm called to do, you will see the importance of your being on this earth and having purpose. Mm. Mm. And talk to anybody who is walking in their purpose. That person will tell you that they've never felt more alive mm. than doing what God has called them to do. Yes. When we are outside of our calling, we'll find ourselves wandering mm. and looking and searching. We'll go from one place to another, from one prophet to another. What am I supposed to do? Prophesy over me, help me, reveal to me, on and on and on. And we will continue to be lost. But when someone has recognized their purpose, they are alive. Mm. That, that, when Jesus said, I've come to give you life and give it to you in abundance, that individual mm. lives abundantly, that abundant life where nothing bothers them, nothing phases them because they are living in their purpose. Mm. Mm. If we don't spend our life, brothers and sisters, pay attention to this. If we don't spend our life pursuing our customized purpose, you will spend your life wishing you were somebody else. Mm. Oh man, this man mm. of God, the way he preaches, I want to be just like him. Oh, this, this woman of God, the way she sings, I want to be just like her. This person, I want to be like them. Oh, this person, oh, they have a, they have a wonderful ministry. They have a, this, I want to be just, I want that anointing. People come in and say, oh, oh, hold my hand so I can get some of your anointing. No, you can't have my anointing because God has given you your own. Yes. You will continue to spend your life wishing you were somebody else. And if you're not mm. happy with who you are, it's the, the reason why is because you don't know who you are. Mm. You don't know mm. the identity that Christ has given you, the purpose and the significance that Christ has given you. David understood this in Psalm 139 verse 14, where he said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm. We are biologically and spiritually solidified. We're just like a DNA. No mm. DNA is identical. Mm. Not even my, I have two, I have a set of identical boys. Even their own fingerprints are not identical. Mm. So every individual is unique. Yes. Jesus himself, when he came to this earth, he said, Father, when he prayed in John 17, I have finished the work you have given me to do. Mm. He fulfilled the purpose for which God sent him in human form. Mm -hmm. Esther, Esther was a Jew, but Esther's beauty caused her to be selected as the king's bride. Mm. Mm. She, if she was to look at her life in terms of her purpose, instead of the material blessing and the position in the kingdom. Mm. If Esther saw it that, oh, I'm beautiful, I'm cute, I got it going on, and forgot about why God put her there, she would have done God a disservice. She would have done herself a disservice and she would have done her people a disservice. Mm. But thank God for her uncle, Mordecai, who said, hey girl, <laughs> don't get the big head up in here. Yes. Don't, don't think that you just, you got, the, you know, the king thinks you all that and you're just here to, to enjoy uh, all these manicures and pedicures 
and all this and that. Nope. If you don't step up and take your purpose, God will raise up someone else. Mm. So look at this as an opportunity to be used mm. by God. That's Amen. right. When it comes to searching for our customized purpose, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 25 or 20 verse 5 that the counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Mm. A person, you and I, if we are serious about our calling, we will search and we will search and we will desire to know mm. what God put me here for. Amen. Oh Amen. man, let me get on to Romans 8.28. This is perhaps one of the most misquoted scriptures in all of the Bible. This is, oh, somebody, oh, Romans 8, 28. Okay, oh, God's about to work it out. Oh, work it out. He can work it out. Work it out. That's the Christian national anthem. For we know mm -hmm. that all things are working together for the good of them who mm -hmm. love him and are called according to his purpose. Now, mm -hmm. here's the problem with that verse. We all embrace that verse because it's such a good verse. It's a wonderful verse. Everybody wants everything to work out. Of course. Who who, who would say that, oh, I want everything to fail? Nobody. Mm. I, I want the good, good verses, the happy verses, the ones that make me feel like, yeah, everything's going to be okay. And so we know that all things are working out. But he goes on to say, for them that, that love him, and are called mm. according to his purpose. Let me tell yes. you this, brothers and sisters, if you are not actively seeking your purpose, what that suggests is that you don't know God, you don't love God, therefore all things can work together for you. Mm. Simple. There are conditions upon conditions. You must first be called according to his purpose, actively seeking that pur purpose, walking in that purpose. Mm. and allowing yourself to, to display your love for God because only mm. those who love God and desire God will seek out the purpose God has for them. Mm. It is then and only then where God can cause all things to work out for you because you are loving him because you are pursuing his purpose for your life. So when we quote that scripture, let's make sure we are actively and 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 and, and genuinely living in purpose out of our love for God. Hmm. I bet you you won't read Romans 8.28 ever again the same way. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So it's a customized purpose. Number That's three. Right. Number three. It's a comprehensive purpose. Hmm. You see, one of the reasons why many don't find their purpose is because their purpose isn't linked to anything bigger than themselves. Mm. You, 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 the, the focus, see, the, the, there are three people in whom you focus on when it comes to your purpose. And those three people are me, myself, and I. Mm. Mm. When, when that is the mindset, when that is the perspective, when that is the attitude, God cannot show you the calling. Why? Because it is bigger than you. Mm. It is bigger than me. Mm. When God called Abraham, he didn't tell him, I'm going to give you a son and leave it at that. I'm going to give you a son in your old age since you've never had children. He didn't say that. He said, I am going to bless you and you, Abraham, are going to be a blessing. Amen. The purpose in which I'm calling you, Abraham, is for bigger than yourself. There are generations and generations of people of faith that are going to follow you. And that is going to build a, 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 a series of, of generations that look to me and trust in me and live on purpose for me. If we are thinking just about ourselves, it would be very difficult for God to show us our calling. We are pieces of a puzzle. Think about it. Think about God's plan. And we, you and I, are just little bits and pieces of a puzzle. Without the full puzzle, it's just a piece. And it's not significant. Mm. But imagine this. If you have put a hundred piece puzzle together <laughs> and you've missed just one. 
and you only have 99 pieces together, you have an incomplete puzzle. That's right. And the one piece missing is the 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 the, 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 the symbolism, or it symbolizes that one person who is not operating in their purpose. Mm. The full picture cannot be complete. What is the this bigger picture that God has called us all to. I said it in the original definition. It is the maximizing of God's glory and the mm. impact and, and expansion of his kingdom. That's it. You are not here for God to bless you and be happy. You are not here mm. to make all the wealth and show off all your cars and show off your big house. Does God bless us with those things? Yes, but that's not his end game. His end game mm. is that in him, we who he has created live to glorify him and our work, mm. our actions, our purpose expect.